Welcome to the Zombie Book Club, the only book club where the book is Leah and I staring at each other across the table in our zombie bunker, pondering over our existential dread. <sighs> I'm Dan, and when I'm not screaming into the void and hoping it doesn't scream back, I'm writing a book about the resilience of everyday people surviving a zombie outbreak. Mm. And I'm Leah, and when I am not staying up literally all night, for weeks on end, reading about the United States-backed genocides in Palestine and the Congo and so many other places in the oh, world so because we places. are an imperial force, uh, and thinking about what, if any, little tiny things I can do next to support the movement against, I don't know, killing people. I'm drawing chickens. Yeah, draw some chickens. Yeah, I yeah, I've moved on from cats to chickens. Yeah, you've this you you're working on your second chicken, aren't my, you? My yeah, I just finished my second chicken. His name's yeah. Barn Roo. He's not a zombie. No. <laughs> He's a happy Barn Roo chicken and I love him. Today we are talking about uh what, spreadsheets. What are we talking about? We're talking about spreadsheets. Oh, and survival stories. Yeah. And groans from the horde we're and gonna, whatever else we want groan. to. Yeah. Because we're keeping it casual. We just finished talking to Lori Calcaterra, the yeah. Path of the Pale Rider, which is actually coming up in your future, but and is in our past that we just recorded episodes. it. Two episodes. Two uh, episodes. Yeah, this is episode 42. So yeah, three episodes. Episode 45 is the epic Lori Calcaterra. Yeah. She's awesome. Which, we had fun. It means you have time. If you have not gotten any of uh path of the pale rider issues yet it's time go get them yeah she has some you yeah can, you can buy them they're She'll really good do that get all four <laughs> and get the uh, choose your own adventure book highly yeah. recommend get the hot sauce if you can if you can <laughs> yeah if you're in texas you can get the hot sauce yeah we release episodes every sunday so subscribe <laughs> You know, I actually tried to fix this. <laughs> it's to, spelled wrong in our notes. Still, it, was, it was spelled subscribe last time. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to fix it, not subscribe. So I think I'm diagnosing us both with dyslexia as well as ADHD because yeah. we cannot seem to spell this right. I love how spell check not only underlined it red, but also underlined it like purple or blue. <laughs> I don't have any spell check online. What's that about? My spell yeah. check thinks this is a word. It's like, it's like. It, it's like, not only is this misspelled, but it's bad grammar. <laughs> mm. So, Dan, how's your life been Ugh, since we last did a casual day? Awful. It's been a little while. It's yeah. been awful. Yeah, well, kind of. I, I've been back to work, mm. uh, which is awful. I yeah. don't recommend work. I don't recommend work either. Some people are like, work is my life. I define myself by how good of a worker I am and how much of my own life energy and resources and health I put into my job. And I say, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that shit. Have you fuck ever that. felt that way? I mean, I, I've i always put 1000% of myself into a job, but there's like, it comes with burnout and I have been burned out for four years. <laughs> you have been. Yeah. Um, probably five years, but. <laughs> yeah, I was, I think I was fully in the like, even though I intellectually did not believe in the pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and I've been on the socialist side of things for a long time now, I, uh, I somehow still felt like my life purpose was to work. Yeah. And it's really only probably, I think it started to hit me at around 37, 38, where I was like, wait a second, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is sucking up every ounce of my life and soul. Yeah. I don't like this. And also this retirement fund that I've been pumping money into might not even ever be worth anything No, because it's increasing at the same rate as inflation <laughs> lately uh so you know what um there is a good thing about my return to work which is that i've i've been able to continue writing mm -hmm. uh by i've i've been talking about this on threads a little bit um, but i have been using dictation um, i use otter to record my voice which then uh, transcripts my voice. Otter, sponsor us. Give us yeah. a sponsor code. Come on, Otter. Give me money. Otter.ai. I've used it for work. It's actually very helpful. You don't it have to take meeting incredible. notes because it just makes them for you. It does make really bad typos sometimes. Have you it found these sometimes. funny typos? Uh, there are so many. <laughs> it's you know, like the, the good thing, though, is that the more you talk to it, the better it understands you. Mm. But um, Otter is like probably one of the best out there. There's also like dragon dictation. Um, a lot of people have been using uh google voice typing and not google like transcription but it's called google voice typing and it's built into like google docs and the google keyboard on mobile um which is fine but like for what i needed it for like i needed to be able to not talk for a long time and not have it like end 
the session. Mm. I needed to just record. And that's and, what Otter does? Yeah. And actually, it also works if you like if you start recording and you lose signal and you have no data, like it's it's just recording an audio file. So you so even if you don't have Wi-Fi, like you're driving around yeah. in the hills of Vermont and you can still record and get yeah. audio. Dictation. And then it'll then it'll um, transcribe it after you get back to civilization. That's awesome, because yeah. that's a real issue here. Like there were many things I was excited about with moving to Vermont. But one of the things that I did not fully grok was the fact grok? that like my grok yeah like never um, heard that word in my life like you've grokked it no it's a science fiction oh my god it's from um of course now i'm not gonna remember because my brain sucks is it from i should talk nicer to my grok? brain no it's uh, uh brave new world by heinlein i feel like i need to oh, look this the book up. that's on the shelf yeah i'm pretty sure <laughs> i like, haven't read it uh grokking to grok grokking it sounds familiar let's i'll read you uh what why does grokking occur? Grokking refers to the surprising phenomenon of delayed generalization where neural no, this is way too serious. I grokking was a grokking means like I comprehend, but okay, I'm pretty well, sure. Let's just accept that it says that it's I comprehend. Anyways, no, uh, I have to look this up. Dictation. I'm getting back to dictation now. <laughs> okay, I will I will get back to grokking on my personal life update. Yeah. You can talk about dictation now. <laughs> yeah. Um so I haven't been able to like do a lot of it because it requires me to be like on some like really repetitive task to do this at work. I'm mm. doing it at work. <laughs> yeah, you're driving and talking. Yeah, I'm I'm using a my trucking headset. I'm talking to my phone while driving. So like it's it's a it's a process. There's a lot of distractions involved. Uh but so far I've been I've I've really liked it and uh you know, when I'm not I'm not a bad I'm not I'm not bad at like at like writing a lot of words. You know, when I do like a writing session with my fingers, usually I'll get between uh, fifteen hundred and three thousand words in an afternoon. Right? Pretty like, good. You know, the three or four hours. You know, about about fifteen hundred words usually. Um, I try I try to go for a thousand minimum. So this week I recorded two sessions that were each about an hour long. So I've got about two hours of actual voice time dictating and uh, this week's total is 7474 words mm, that's a lot of words yeah are there any words that show up the most like does zombie show up a lot in those words How no many times i actually don't the word say zombie, zombie very often because mm. in my book they're infected oh what's like a word do you think that like shows up a lot in your story is this recording yes no, that's why it shows up a lot. Oh, is this recording? <laughs> test, test. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's true. Also, um, you were telling me about this guy that talks all day on the CB oh, radio. Because yeah. you have to. Can you just explain for a minute, like, why you have to have a CB radio in the yeah. job that you do? And then I will. So driving a dump truck, like right now, I'm just hauling material. So I'm going from one place, picking up dirt and bringing it back to a pit. Um, and then when I go uh, across the scales to way how much I've, I've transported i have to talk to the uh, the people in the control room so that they can log it all um and there is this dude who from the moment we started at like six o'clock in the morning until the second we left at like five o'clock at night uh just wouldn't shut the fuck up <laughs> he was just like just like yeah, you know, I rode up to the White Mountains on my motorcycle, and then uh, like I tune out, and then like an hour later, he's like, and then I took the boat out onto the lake, and you wouldn't believe who I saw out there. And then like two two and a half hours after that, he's like, yeah, so uh, Kyle, he's probably going to retire this year, and it's like, just what? Why are you? Who are you talking to? Why are you? Why don't? Why don't you stop? Please just like leave me alone. I have to listen to this. And you were making me a captive audience. <laughs> Literally a captive audience. Yeah, because I can't turn it off. I need it. So did Otter capture you telling this guy to go fuck himself yes. when he was interrupting you? Yeah. And it's part of my story now. Me being like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> just shut up. Oh, you're upsetting the dogs. And because he's keying okay, his mic he... while I'm screaming at him, he can't hear me. So... <laughs> Ziggy, I just want you to know everything's okay. We're just talking to our podcast friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you can't see them. And neither can we. Are they imaginary? Possibly. They might be imaginary. <laughs>
But they live in very real places. Yes, like Hilliard, <laughs> Ohio. That's right. It's the only one I remember re- remember off the top of my head. But, uh, yeah, I'm very excited about this, and I think I'm just going to continue this this way of doing things because, like, the way that I can now write, it comes at the speed of thought. So, like, as fast as I can think it, it can hit the paper. Whereas, like, when I'm writing, it's like there's like a big delay where I'm like, I'm like, I have a thought, write the thought, now have another thought write that thought and it's a very slow process but when you're dictating it just comes right out it just flows yeah so there'll be lots of editing but there always is with a second oh, draft there's gonna be so much and editing. how many words did you think you could do in a month well, based on this calculation you know if i did uh let's see if i did one hour a day five days a week uh that would be about twenty eight thousand words a week wow so I would be able to do about 120,000 words in a month. And how many words are in a book typically? 80,000. Wow. Yeah. So I'd be able to have a rough draft in one month. So what you're telling me is that this whole time that you were off, you should have been working. I should have written four books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could have just been sitting in your cozy chair. Yeah. The editing process is going to take a very long time mm-hmm. because like when it all comes out, it's all one paragraph. Are we recording? Yes. Okay. <laughs> We're recording this. I'm we're having great. a conversation. I had a moment where I was like, I feel like we were just talking and my brain's tired. Yeah. We did the intro and everything. Yeah, we did. But then I was like, wait. Yeah. But uh, anyways, I'm just excited about that. And I think it's going to be great. I think you're great. I oh, can't wait thanks. to read it. <laughs> yeah. One day. It's time. After talking to Lori, I was just thinking about like, you know, she's done such a good job of promoting her work, and she's also put a lot of time and hours into making Bath the Pale oh Rider. And hot sauce. And hot sauce and other kinds of creative surprises if you back one of her Kickstarters. I'm just like, this You're gonna is You're going to love really... this episode, by the way. Yeah. You guys don't know what we're talking about right now, but the episode 45, it's going to be... It's going to be hot sauce. That's It's that's going to be hot. Yeah, that's the word that we're going to use now from now on. And if you haven't listened to Zombie Ween Game Show, you better, because otherwise yeah. none, nothing will make sense. That's episode 21. That's when we but, met Lori. We didn't know her before that no, episode. No, she just showed up. Yeah. Brandon uh, Staraki, he was going to be on episode 21 as our third member of Zombie Ween, but he called out at the last second. But he was like, I'll give you somebody else. There's this person named Lori. And that's she's not hilarious. What happened, as the well, that's how who I actually write. That's the how emails. I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, this is taking me way off track of what I was trying to say. Okay, <laughs> but we'll. I will. We'll get there. Uh, what actually happened, folks? This is how you know memory is faulty because I've got the email receipts. You got the receipts. I got the receipts. I said, "Hey, Brandon, we're doing this thing. Do you want to do it?" And he said, "Yes." I said, "Do you know anybody else who's cool?" And he said, "Yes, Lori." And then I said, cool, can you introduce me to Lori? And then he introduced me to Lori and I wrote to Lori and I said, hey, you want to do this thing? Then on the day of, he had a personal emergency and couldn't join. And he did offer to give us a sub, but it was we didn't need a sub at that point. So that's the true, very fascinating behind the scenes story. Now, you know, I like my story better. I think it it played out way cooler. It did, but it wasn't true. Uh, how stories are there was a reason why i brought this up true. which was not to bore our listeners with the details of how we organize our podcast guests i was actually bringing it up because Lori's story of like taking all this time to create something really beautiful and powerful that is path of the pale rider is what i feel like you're doing right now and yeah. like one day you're gonna have a kickstarter and i don't know if you're gonna have hot sauce i mean now i am <laughs> You're gonna, oh, you're gonna compete? No, with you know the hot what? Sauce? I don't think I don't think my brand would work well with hot sauce. Yeah, what would be your like special <sighs> gift? I don't know, a gun. <laughs> <laughs> or hmm. pre-order your the on the Kickstarter, and like, I'll send you a gun. <laughs> I, you know, I could draw some chickens. It's not arms dealing because technically it's a gift. That's true. Or it's a I'm fulfilling pledge. a reward. You're fulfilling a <laughs> pledge. Yeah. Interesting. So don't at me, ATF. But anyway, anyways, I just saying like it was inspiring to think about what the future will be for you with your book. Yeah. How That's have you been cool. doing, Leah? <sighs> Suffering from the seasonal depression of you going back to work. Yeah, it sucks. Um, I am almost four weeks out. I've got four more days for the four week mark. That is when I'm supposed to potentially possibly be having my feet start to feel better. Hmm. And um, this is from, for those of you who either haven't listened before or have forgotten i had a procedure on my feeties because i have really severe plantar fasciitis which is like honestly the lamest (laughs) chronic illness like really just that my feet hurt all the time just tell them you uh broke your ankles or something i did break my ankle once fighting a bear see big james the bear yeah yeah (laughs) a zombie bear which will also make sense if you repath the pale rider but anyways uh yeah i 
I'm curious if I have any other like chronic pain friends out there listening. If I do, I'm sorry. It sucks, man. Yeah. We just do what we can to like enjoy life, which is why I'm on this drawing kick. So I'm hoping that by the time um, Lori's episode comes out on May 10th, I'm pretty sure that I will know that my feet are getting better. If I don't, the doctor told me like I need to go in and get an MRI and then amputation. Um, <laughs> possibly surgery he also said like if this doesn't work then something else might be going on so he was like you could have a cyst in there yes i did just knock the table with my feet yeah that are hurty feet so they're kind of hurting today that's how I think, you, that's how they can experience your feet right now is by kicking the yeah table. the sound of the table kicking but i will also say you going back to work means i'm on them more so i have yeah. noticed them being a little more ouchy the last sorry. week but um we will see what happens well, you know what? i'll just quit my job <laughs> That's the dream. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I mean, further update. I'm I'm working on some uh, some claims with the VA. I'm a veteran, and uh, you know, if you are disabled from your your time in the army, uh, you can get compensation from the VA. And you know, I get a little bit, and uh, but you should it's get not, a lot more. It's it, what it, what I'm rated at right now is not representative of my actual injuries. So I'm working with a lawyer to. Get it where it's supposed to be. And uh, maybe one day, uh, you know, maybe one day. I'm just going to say maybe one day because I don't want to get my hopes up. Yeah. But regardless, you'll at least be acknowledged for what uh, you've been through. And I will say, like, if you don't know veterans or you don't know much about disability ratings, and you're like, why do you have to get a lawyer? Like, that sounds kind of like he's just trying to get all the dollars. No, 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 no. If you don't understand how to work the system, you're fucked. And yeah. Dan, the era you were in was the era of like, don't go to the doctor. Don't ever admit that you're in pain. <sighs> yeah. My medical records are comically thin. Yeah. They, so they, they said that work. to me. They're like, this is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my laugh of pain. They're like, you've never been to the doctor, have you? <laughs> yeah. Um, what else is going on with me? I have finally decided to apply my spreadsheet brilliance. Oh. to the podcast yeah that's right i was so proud about it i actually made a story on instagram this week just about my spreadsheet which i realized we are coming up on 40 no coming up on 50 episodes and we don't have a way to track them so i made a beautiful spreadsheet and i'm really proud of it and it's uh all sortable and it is going to include it's not totally done this part all of the episodes are in there and the kind of episode they are and who we interviewed um it records whether or not the author what of anything we've read is uh their race their gender because one of the things that i realized pretty quickly when we started this show was that if i didn't keep track of it we would just have white male authors it's pretty true. much exclusively yeah. there's a lot in the zombie genre yeah and that's fine like i yeah. there's some you're a white male author i it's love true. you literally <laughs> i'm gonna be one just, more on the pile <laughs> yeah i'm just <laughs> saying that uh there are also lots of fantastic Women authors, Lori Calcaterra being one of them. Yeah. There are black authors like um, Sylvester Barzi, which, frankly, if I had not been like, wait a second, this is starting to look real white. Yeah. And yeah. I started like actively looking for authors of color. I don't know that we would have met him and that would have really sucked. Yeah. Like um, he's awesome. You know, he's, he's Lori's awesome. He, he has a, a, a fair amount of, of uh, notoriety in his in his circles, but I don't know if we would have found him if we weren't looking for him. Yeah, because it's. uh like many things it's a white dominated uh genre unfortunately yeah. so we white are conservative yes. dominated genre yes we are not that yeah. we are white, white. <laughs> <laughs> but uh we anyhow <laughs> I, i'm tracking all of that so i can actually see and keep myself honest keep us both honest and yeah. then we're also tracking all of the things that we've watched or read and whether or not they passed all of the representation tests that we do so that at some point we can do an episode to sort of like have the bigger picture yeah. of the field of zombie literature. So that makes me really excited. But then here's the thing that really got me. Dan told me about Ollie Eats Brains. Oh, yeah. Ollie Eats Ollie. Brains spreadsheets. Yeah. Ollie Eats Brains found me on Discord, which I haven't been listing the link to the Discord since like the very early days of the podcast because I didn't really have time to spend there. and. While I got a lot of people from my previous discords to join it, they didn't really have a lot to say about zombies, um, except for like a small handful. So I'm yes, like, I'm really just going to keep days. it on Instagram and just kind of forget about it. And then I saw that I had a notification on uh, on Discord 
and somebody found it named Ali Eats Brains. Which means he was, or they, I don't know their gender. Oh no, yes, he. Uh, it means that he was listening to early ones. So kudos to you, Ali, because yeah. I'd like to believe that we're getting better <laughs> yeah. in our earlier episodes. So in this Discord, and I'm going to list the link to the Discord down below mm-hmm. in the description, because uh, you know maybe people want to go take a look at this. Um, Ali Eats Brains, his passion project is creating spreadsheets for zombie movies and zombie books. Yeah. Um, he has he has one spreadsheet that has like, it's all books, comics, video games, TV shows, and movies um, with brain ratings. Yes. One to five brains. <laughs> yeah, really enjoyed. One to five brains. And, he's, and he has rated a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly dedicated. Uh, I don't even know how many are in that list. I think it's well over 500. I'm going to scroll in down right now. I you know what, Ollie, I will say thank you for this. I am probably going to look at this list. And if it has less than three, I'm going to be like, Dan, let's not watch it because <laughs> this list alone has nine hundred and sixty six titles Jesus. of movies, books, TV shows, video games with their rating, who the writer is, who the director is when it was re- the date it was or not year it was released uh sometimes youtube links like it's fucking awesome yeah and honestly like i kind of want to like whenever we rate something now i'm like what did ollie think (laughs) do we agree or disagree yeah we gotta check the ollie rating yeah um and then he's got another spreadsheet that's just books yeah and i assume he probably wants to incorporate this into the previous one because just books is like over 1700 titles i love you but you're lying again (laughs) because i'm I'm looking at it how many is it 1439 that's close that's like 250 off but you know yeah 260 (laughs) off uh but still 1439 and i would say that it is not completely comprehensive yet because it doesn't has the most of the things that we have talked about but not everything Wait, does it have comic series in here? Is it only books? Uh, there, well, I, I, think I think he's adding. I think he's adding comics. When I checked it last, there was there was just. Uh, I think it was Path of the Pale Rider was on it. Well, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, but he has comics on the other spreadsheet. Yeah, and I love that. Like he's got the writer. It says rating and director. So this is a real project. But I will say, I also felt really overwhelmed because I'm like, we read a book once every ten weeks, which is like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe we do five a year. Yeah. I read a few more than that. <laughs> yeah, but we only talk about five a year yeah. unless we happen to talk about something in a casual dead in some way. Um, I will just say, like, I feel like we should just like randomly pick stuff sometimes because I just read 1438 is Zomo Sapiens. Uh, <laughs> that, the apocalypse. Mm, that sounds that sounds uh, pretty wild. <laughs> what I like about that list is because it has the author listed. I can sort by the author and see like who the most prolific is. Yeah. And I'm instantly thinking like I can sort by gender. Well, you can't sort by gender, but I can get a sense from names. Mm, yeah. And um, that's really great because I, I will say I really enjoy reading um, women authors. Yeah. Because I can relate. And uh, I don't know. At some point, Again, we, should, we need to have um, gender parody. We in should we read interview. the I forget what the, I forget. I think it's called Dead World Saga. It's by Rachel Ox. Mm. Um, I read that a few years ago and uh, I think maybe maybe you'd like it. There's also a Shakespeare Undead by Lori Handeland. I'm just like scrolling mm. through this. It's really fun. I highly recommend if you love zombies too, just go look at this yeah. spreadsheet. This is a true labor of love. Like I I. I'm going to I I think that this might be the most comprehensive list that's out there. I've seen a lot of lists, but like what a lot of lists that I've seen online, especially if they're a really big list, is that they will just list horror movies in with zombie movies and call it a zombie movie. Yes. So like they're like the thing zombie movie. You're like, no, it's like, no, that's an alien movie. But I I get what you're saying. It's scary, I guess. So. (laughs) I don't, you know, I'm curious if um, Ollie is aware of Zombie Research Society oh, and if he's contributing in some way, because I do think like I doubt that they have this comprehensive of a list. I'm just looking at their website right now. I mean, it does have a movies and TV section, graphic novels. I mean, maybe. Yeah. But, you know, it's I think, still very impressive. I think if the Zombie Research Society hasn't scooped Ollie up yet, we have to uh, they need to hire him. We need to pull Ollie into our ranks. Don't give don't give Ollie ideas. <laughs> Yeah, Ollie, come be on our team. Yeah, 
if you if you start talking about him being hired by the Zombie Research Society, we're gonna have to like have a budget and be like, Ollie, we'll pay you more. I will say, I was <laughs> thinking like, I don't know, Ollie, I'm gonna propose this. I'm making a public proposal to you. I would like to join spreadsheet forces with you. Yeah. Because I would love if we added the Bechdel test, the race test, um, the ableism test, the Fries test, and the Vito Russo test around LGBTQ folks uh to all of them because i think like even though i'm going to analyze the ones that we are talking about we are already still positively biasing our choices by not just reading from one um identity lens of white males so i'm just saying it would be cool to have all of that there and also i would love to actually see the breakdown of authors by race and gender too because again i think that there's way more diversity than what we see and what is typically talked about yeah in the zombie uh, world. So, yeah. And also, um, uh, gender identity because yes. like, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to begin to find a story that's written from the perspective of somebody who's trans. Yeah. Like I, it's gotta be out there. It's gotta be. Um, but you know, I wouldn't know by looking at somebody's name on no. a book. No, you can't, you can't tell. And those are kind of those are the stories that are interesting, like yeah. in uh, Path of the Pale Rider, there is a character who is deaf and there's a lot of American sign language. It's cool. Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. I think that's the cool point. And then the whole point of books is to like imagine and get to live in a world that you won't ever get to because of who you are and your own identity. Like it's neat to get different yeah. perspectives. I also have a list, Ollie, of um, a bunch of books that we want to read. So I I will also see and just cross reference. I bet you you already have them all. <laughs> but I'll check. Yeah, he did he did say that um that he was adding some to the list because of our podcast. So wow, I'm all that makes me really proud that we talked about books or movies that he didn't already have in his vast spreadsheets of everything that exists. Yeah, I want to know what inspired this. He's also an author. We should give we should give you a real shout out, Ollie. Yeah, What's actually, your... I went to his website. He has yeah. some stories there. I haven't had any time to read anything. It's yet, Ollie but, Eats uh, Brains. I don't remember the exact website. Yeah, I think it's OllieEatsBrains.com, I think. We'll put a link for it in the description. Yeah. So thanks, Ollie, for doing that. That's yeah. really cool. I, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of exciting when you meet somebody who's doing something really cool like this, because I feel like the zombie apocalypse genre is like it's a bit niche. And not everybody's on the same page. You know, like, you know, some people just watch a lot of movies. Some people, you know, they play a lot of video games. But there's very few times where you meet somebody who's just like, I'm collating all the data about zombies. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, come see my vast library of zombie information. <laughs> That'll be our bookshelves that are behind me right now. Yeah. Just zombie stuff. One day we're working day. on it. First, we got to clean it. <sighs> yeah that's not the that doesn't give me dopamine to think of cleaning it but i will say like uh i know that we're making requests and clearly you're already doing a passion of love but dan has some specific things that he's also hoping you will do oh well i mean you know i mean he probably doesn't want to hear a big list of things that he should also yeah, do oh no we're because, gonna, we are we are assigning you things Ollie. yeah here's here's a here's a whole mountain of work for you Ollie. yes um well that's why i'm offering to join forces yeah what would be great is if there was like IMDb, Rotten Tomato, and Metacritic sc scores for the movies. Um, but that would be <laughs> that would be a lot yeah. of research to do. What are your plans for this spreadsheet? Like, I feel like there's a like, what's your evil conspiracy for why you're collating all of this data? I need to know. Should we do a dissertation together on zombie literature? <laughs> do I need to go back to school? I'm already talking about talk, doing something on. A dissertation on zombie kosis. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, go back and I don't know what episode that is, but look up zombie kosis. You'll find it. Yeah, should I go to school at all? <laughs> I don't think you. Well, I mean, we don't need to. We could just. I mean, I really am such a dork because I'm looking at the spreadsheet and I'm like, oh, like there's so much cool data we could glean yeah. about the zombie uh, cultural world that we've created. Yeah, you know, the the VA just passed a um, passed a a thing to um, extend the uh a lot of the education benefits of my uh really post 9 11 gi bill which uh i don't know if i can still use it i, I think i passed the time limit but maybe they changed there it. shouldn't be a time limit yeah you'd think so <laughs> there should be like maybe there's like a use limit but not a time limit because people's lives are not linear and i don't know 
when you've been through war and trauma, it might take you a little while to figure your shit out. Yeah. <laughs> it takes people who don't go through that a long time to figure their shit out. But, uh, you know, it'd be great if I could find a course that's just like zombie. <laughs> I, I, I get my degree in zombies. Degree. Yeah. I mean, you really could work with I'm looking at the Zombie Research Society website, which is just zombieresearchsociety.com. They have a list of experts. Um we got uh, just a person with a PhD, somebody who works for the Center for the Neural Basis of Cognition. Wow. Yeah. Um, a best-selling author, Scott Kenamore. Does that ring a bell for you? Mm. Oh, he wrote The Zen of Zombie, The Art of Zombie Warfare, and Zombie Illinois. Oh, Zombie Illinois sounds familiar. And Fallujah Heart. Fallu- Is that how you say it? Fallujah? Fallujah? In Iraq? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we have Peter Cummings, MD, Massachusetts Medical Examiner's Office. See, that makes sense to me to have a medical examiner, somebody who examines dead bodies. Yeah. Some other PhD person, San Diego, Brain Networks. This oh, is wild. This is an actual group of people. They're going to scoop up Ollie for sure. They are. Ollie, don't come go to the dark side. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, I just found that really exciting. Do we want to move on to our next topic? Our main topic. The thing that will take up all of our time. All of our time. Surviving. Yes. Survival stories. Yes. We got a really wild story from Chris after listening to your Snowpocalypse episode. Yeah. You know, I I don't think we planned on talking about survival stories so soon after the Snowpocalypse episode. But Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, um, he he came back with a doozy uh, and uh, he he posted it on on, on YouTube. And um, it is it's I mean, he needs to, this is this needs to be a movie. It does. Yeah. Should I read it? I would like it if you read it. OK, I'm going to read a little bit of timing, like give you the chance to live react. Yeah. And before I do, listeners, whose stories of the snowpocalypse is scarier? <laughs> I think Chris's. I think so, too. But it's a, it's another snowpocalypse. This is snowpocalypse. You know what? You know, I I had my survival story when I was a fully capable adult. Yeah. This one, Chris, is how old? I think 10. Yeah. We'll find out as we read the story. But yeah, I think like this may realize there could be a whole snowpocalypse series just on its own. I survived yeah. winter. <laughs> I want a t-shirt that just says, I survived winter. <laughs> Please give me a round of applause. All right. So this is Chris's story. It's also on the YouTube episode uh, for Snowpocalypse. He says he grew up in Valparaiso or Chester- Chesterton, Indiana. That's on the top of Lake Michigan. Uh, Or on the tip of Lake Michigan, we would get the regular blizzard, then the lake effect blizzard on top. So he's also a lake effect guy. Yeah. uh, Like you were. Not always, but when it did, people died. Just like Dan is saying. The National Guard would be out once or twice every winter and they would set up uh, at the roads in and out of towns. If you tried to leave during a state emergency, you would be rammed off the road if you didn't stop and stuck at the armory for 48 hours to a week at times. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if that's what happened uh, where I lived. I don't think it did. Um, but also where I lived was a very rural area. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think police were out there in numbers the way that it would be if it was in a much more congested like city or town area. Um, yeah, for I'm... the most part, they're just like, please don't leave your house and die. Whereas like if like, you're on our system, <laughs> if you're in a city, they're like, you're going to hurt somebody. Yeah. Like that storm in Buffalo yeah. a couple of years back was pretty disturbing and people died. Um, like but that, I still think about that, the guy uh, who was looking for a hotel that night. Like, how did he survive? Oh, in my story. In your story. Yeah. yeah. But let's get back to Chris's. Yeah. Apparently there's a thousand dollar fine. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, They would go into any 24 hour store with M16s and tell the staff to get home or go to jail. This is wild. (laughs) Some authoritarian shit. If they did not do this shit like the guy Dan ran into for somewhere to go. Oh, the guy I was just talking about and Dan walking and possibly dying would happen. There would also be horrific pileups. I can still see the carnage from the old news reports. So that sets the scene for y'all. Yeah. All right. Here's Chris's story. I didn't have to walk four miles in the country. It was five, Chris. Five. Yeah, five, Chris. <laughs> Get your facts straight. However, this is little 10-year-old legs, I'd like yeah. to point out. We had to walk two miles through town to the hospital for shelter. No driving allowed. My mom worked at the hospital on the day of the storm. A university cop who checked on us all uh, as we lived kind of on campus. VU is literally inside a normal neighborhood. Uh, it was like you should. Oh, this person was like, you should go to the hospital. You're allowed to be there. And if the power goes out, it'll be rough. 
during these storms, they'd issued a code white. I don't even know what that is. A code white. Yeah. He repeats. Um, do you know what a code white is? Dan? I don't, but I do know a few hospital codes like uh, a code blue, I think is like a, a heart condition. So like if somebody's like, like dying of a heart attack and they well, need immediate must help. be a storm code though it's not about a person and then code. a code red is like somebody who's threatening people with a weapon okay um so this is like a different code where it's like there's snow outside everybody you need to be a, a, a on your guard or else the snow will get you well you know what's great chris explains it in the next sentence okay, i just realized <laughs> <laughs> a code white means that all essential staff are locked inside for safety this is insane this is an example of the government being like you know what People are dumb. Yeah. So we're going to just make some laws so you don't kill yourself. Yeah. But also in a hospital, like they want, they need people to stay on staff. Yeah. Um, and if people are leaving in a really dangerous situation, they might not be able to come back to work. So he continues. Mom being the main cook there would make sandwiches. He says Sammy's, but I'm yeah, sandwiches. Sammy's. Sammy's for all the first responders at the hospital armory and the county courthouse um, were rescue centers and where the plow drivers waited. Dad says, don't worry, we've got gas heat. Yeah. So he does not listen to the person who says, you should go to the hospital. Uh, well, day two comes and there's three feet of blowing snow outside. The sirens blare like fucking Silent Hill and the EAS goes off. I think it's emergency something yeah, system. Um, emergency alert system. Yeah. And informs us the power has been overloaded. Prepare to shelter. Do not travel. Call 911 if you need anything. The power goes out. Then the whole county's power goes out. Yeah. That's not a good, that's not good. That's not good. Three feet of snow, probably really fucking cold. We don't but have you know a what? temperature here yet. He's got gas heat, so he's doing good, it's right? just fine. Yeah, uh, no problem. No, because <laughs> the gas heat has a thermostat and that's electric. <laughs> this is real. This is our situation yeah. a couple of years ago um, with our pellet stove. Due to safety switches, it's dead. We live in an apartment building and the other occupants who are students or locals all had left. It's getting colder. It's going to get dark. We might die. Yeah. I am 10 at this time. My dad, who uh, I was the same size as then, and then he says in brackets, I'm way too tall. <laughs> how tall is your dad? How, how tall are we talking, Chris? Uh, and I bundle up. We go outside and it's horrible. I tie onto the rope he has around his waist because I can't see him. That's This is the thing I think that really kills people in the storms is lack of visibility, like yeah. in your story. Like want, just wandering, not being able to see. I mean, see. when people get trapped, like if they if they go off the road and like they they can't get help and you know they get, they get trapped in their car and buried under snow. Um, the thing that kills them is when they decide to leave their car. Um, there's there's stories of like people who like they they lived for two months inside of their car inside of a snowbank with only one granola bar, uh, but like the one person that like tried to go get help died like instantly because Wild. they got they, they went the wrong way and they got turned around they were like 20 feet from a house that's so sad yeah yeah so he's tied remember he's tied to his dad yeah um every foot of snow fights us my face burns i'm so scared i clenched the rope with a death grip you should have had a wearing beard. gloves yeah yeah 10 year old chris why don't you have a beard yet yeah grow a beard chris Jeez. apocalypse Actually, survival I 101 chris, I, I i know i know chris's face mm -hmm. and he'd He'd look pretty rad with a beard, I think. Mm. Big, long one. Big, long beard at 10. At 10. Yeah. <laughs> He'd probably look the same way as he does now. Uh, half a block into our two-mile, 12-block excursion, we see police lights. We something and scream. Uh, sorry, I don't. there's like a typo here. Something, we scream, but it's gotten dark, very dark. Despite our calls, the tracked SUV rolls by. It's been 45 minutes we've been outside. Yeah. You know, one thing I was wondering, Chris, when you say tracked SU SUV, is this a tank? Yeah. Do the police have tanks? I mean, it would make <laughs> sense for these kinds of storms. I guess so, yeah. I tell my, my dad, we can do this. I love how you're the cheerleader in this story for your dad, um, as he wants to hide in a neighbor's house, but we'd never get to the door. So I push and he pulls and we stomp and plow and he hurts his arm pretty bad. So I have to go in front and help plow the snow away with my arms. That's wild. <laughs> Two and a half hours go by and we are frozen. So cold is starting to get warm. A yeah. very terrifying effect of exhaustion? Frostbite? That is stage three hypothermia. Where were you? When did you get to that point in your Stage story? three was when I was naked in the basement splitting yeah. wood. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad you didn't cut any fingers off that day. Stage one is like violent shivering. Mm-hmm. Uh, stage two, I, f I forget exactly. I think stage one is shivering and then stage two is like violent shivering, like convulsing. 
um, extreme, like your your extremities start going numb. You have you're finding it difficult to move. Uh, and then stage three, you suddenly become warm, mm. and you're like, ah, oh, so warm. I should probably just take all this off. That's a bad idea. And you can there's I, I forget what it's called, but there's like a a certain like psychosis that happens where you start shedding your your clothes off. Mm. You're just like, ah, oh, I gotta get these clothes off of me. I gotta be naked. Make it in the snow. Yeah. You're making it sound hot, and I don't think it is. It is. It's dangerous. It's so hot. So, you know, but what's happening is your capillaries are constricting. Your body's trying to save itself by keeping its keeping your blood away from the surface area of your skin. Mm. But it also means that the area of your skin is now freezing solid because there's no more warmth going to it. Well, I have good news, even though he's on the verge of uh, hypothermia. Or in hypothermia. He's deep into hypothermia. He says, <laughs> they see the ambulance open, but a covered garage bay and start screaming. I'm curious, what do you scream? Do you just scream help in this moment? Yeah. He's, he's, he's scream, snow. Apocalypse. Cold. Apocalypse. Cold. <laughs> help. <laughs> Au secours. Um, they see us. Thank God. Grab us. And I tell you, that was the best fucking sandwich my mother ever made. Oh, Aww. What kind of sandwich was it? Yeah, let us know. Let's we'll have wait. our okay. Let's have our fantasy sandwich moment. Okay, you have just survived a snow apocalypse. What is your sandwich? Mm, I want to go for something. <gasps> I want to go for something warm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna say like a meatball sub. Yeah, or a Philly. Oh, Philly. A Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, I after it's after mayo. my trip through through uh, the snow apocalypse, um, I don't remember what I ate. But I do remember that, like, I was basically just consuming energy. I was like, put atoms of things in my mouth. You were just like hoovering food. Yeah, I was like, elements, get inside of me. I need energy. (laughs) Fuel me so I don't die. Did your house have power or is the power out at the house, at your mom's house? Yeah. I'd also really be down for some hot chocolate after this. Or apple cider. Oh, my God. Hot apple cider. Mm -hmm. Mm, Yes. Yeah. So what kind of sandwich did she make? Apparently. 78 people died that night, Mm -hmm. but we didn't. It was the blizzard of 1999. Sounds pre-apocalyptic, too, like right before 2000. And then (laughs) this part's funny. Oh, the roaches. I have a picture, but they're about three to five inches long and three inches wide. You're asking him about the roaches. German cockroaches. They bug bombed it like six months into my living there, and I sealed off everything I could. So after that, it was just overpriced. (laughs) This is from this is from his other story story. where he Uh, tells us about. uh, I was just thinking of these like roaches that are surviving winter. No. That makes more sense. When when he when he uh, moves into his roach infested apartment at the mm. end of his first survival story. This is this is Chris's sev- second survival story. I have a feeling that Chris has a lot more survival stories. Yeah, I mean, life is harrowing. Yeah. You know, one one thing about that I think that Chris and I um yeah, we we have a lot in common and one of those things is that we have lived on the fringe of society a lot of our adult lives and we are desperately clawing our way out trying to trying to get somewhere mm-hmm. um so yeah chris if you're still clawing i uh i hope you find i hope you find the edge <laughs> yes get over the edge yeah get over the edge on to safe ground please <laughs> life is scary well i was thinking about telling some of mine but honestly after that i should never i should just never wait for mine to be after somebody else's <laughs> because they'll always be worse no you know what you have different survival stories i think it's important for people to realize too that like you don't have to have uh braved a a dangerous snowstorm to have a survival story mm. i think they're all equally uh important survival stories it's just there's different ways that we have to survive in life That's true. Well, I wrote five things here. I'm going to just read the list and then you get to pick one and I will tell that story. Okay. Number one, almost drowning in my pond as a kid while I was skating. Yeah, that sounds like a survival story. Yep. Number two, getting swept down a set of rapids and my brother rescuing me. Mm, Number three, running away from abuse. Fun times. Number four, running away from dudes at a gas station that I pretty sure wanted to sexually assault me or more. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and number five, getting divorced. <laughs> it's also I mean, a, a survival story. I mean, the first two sound like like these like like what we're talking about right now, like a physical yeah. survival story. I'd actually rather hear 
the running away from abuse or running away from dudes at the gas station story, because mm. I, I want to see some more variety in our survival story. Well, pick one. Running away from abuse. Okay. Well, you were a part of this story. Wow. Was I the abuser? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, good. You were the white knight. I like this story. Yeah. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you like this story. Uh, so where does one begin? I did not prepare for this at all. So we're just going to wing it. Yeah. I guess I'm start gonna... from the beginning. All right. Well, the beginning is... Uh, I think I have alluded to the fact that my childhood was um, in many ways a mess. Uh, I, lots of it was good. Lots of it wasn't good. Yeah. It was not idyllic. It was idyllic in where I grew up. I grew up in a beautiful countryside place and spent a lot of time with cows and stuff. But my family, um, not good. My dad, pretty abusive. And he came from his own fucked up home. And like he would do weird things like be really abusive to me and my mom and my brother. And then like cry and tell us he loved us and how his dad never told him he loved him. It was weird. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. So suffice to say, uh, the model I had of relationships was at like growing up was really not healthy. But you don't know any different. Yeah. When that's your world. And so I ended up the first guy I had a serious relationship with um, that Dan, I'm pretty sure still hates to this day. I don't hate him. No, I don't like him. I kind of want you to hate him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for for me for me to hate somebody that means that I might just like want to like end them. Mm. Um, I have I have a lot of I have a lot of room between uh, people that I dislike and people that I want to shoot in the face. And uh, you know there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of room in those areas. And I think it's just because I've spent so much time between um, experiencing violence and experiencing conflict that like you know how sometimes if you if you have more words for a color. You can see more colors. Mm -hmm. well, I have more words for dislike of people. Oh, so okay, where do you put this on? Like, where what's the? Oh, word? he's like solidly in the middle. Like I don't like him, um, but you know he's not he's not a part of of my world anymore. So let's give him a different name. That's not his real Steve. name. Steve. Steve. Like my dad. Oh, that's weird. It feels incestuous, but okay, Steve. <laughs> mm. um, Steve. Steve. Okay, so Fucking Steve. I think the most important thing here is that my model of relationship is like, no matter how bad it gets, you should stay because that's how you know that you love somebody. Yeah, you got to sacrifice <laughs> stay. your happiness to yeah. make somebody else happy. That's how you that's how you know that your love is true. Yep. That's that's that was what I grew up ourselves. learning. Yeah, that's what you do. Uh, you pick somebody and then no matter what they do to you, you stay. Yeah. How much um, how much abuse would you tolerate from me? None. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Too bad for you. Yeah. This is actually Damn really it. I interesting. can't abuse you. You can't. Nuts. Um, this was an interesting discussion we had just leaping way into the forward, into the uh, future of my life after I escaped the abuse where Dan and I got back together. And I said, like, hey, I've been through some things. And these are the things that if you do any of them, I'm out. Like, there's not going to be like a forgiveness <laughs> period. There's not going to be second chances. Like, this is I've been through too much, and my standards are at a point now where that's not an option. And what did you say? I'm like, I thought I was special. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is kind of a weird thing because obviously I don't want to do anything to like. I don't want to abuse you. I don't want to screw up. I don't want to make you. Uh, I don't want to hurt you. Um, but like, you know, at the time, it's like. How come everybody else got so many chances? Yeah, because <laughs> I, I was. I'm on the third strike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. I didn't even do anything. <laughs> no, uh, but I think that that is an important lesson that I had to learn of self worth, which is just that if something doesn't feel good to me anymore, yeah. then I'm out. Yeah, and That's you know, it. if if somebody is abusing you, it might not be love. Yeah, yeah. Which is why, really, when it comes down to it, I have nothing to worry about. Like. You know, I'm not actually upset that I don't get three strikes like like previous people. Um, I'm just not going to do anything. I've had a lot more than to three abuse strikes. you. <laughs> yeah, because I think the other thing is like, um, I don't think I knew what abuse even was. Yeah, honestly, until like a year ago, I was like, oh, like these are all things that are defined as abuse. So it's been an interesting journey. Like. I still am figuring that out and yeah. what's acceptable and what's not acceptable behavior. And the reality is, is like a lot of our culture is fucked up and we do things to each other that are really not OK. And how do you decide what's OK and not so what's not OK? And I think everybody's line might be a little bit different, but I've been through too much now. So I have pretty strict lines of what's acceptable. Like, yeah. for example, there's no yelling. Like yeah. we 
Dan knows that if yelling starts, like I'm out of here. Um, that's just like a thing that I think some people like they yell when they fight. I can't tolerate it anymore. It's way too triggering yeah. for me. And when I when I in the household that I grew up in, I thought it was actually normal for um, people to have a, a screaming argument at least once per month. Yeah. And then my household that I grew up in was screaming argument at least three times a day. Yeah. In the morning. When we all got back from school, both my parents were teachers, so we'd, we'd all get home around the same time, and then usually at dinner time, and then sometimes before bed, at least three. Yeah. Three was a good day. <laughs> three <laughs> was like an average day, full on screaming. Um, and just like, I'm not going to get into details because I don't think that people need to, uh, in case you've been through things, I don't need to bring stuff up for you. My point is, is it wasn't good. Yeah. So then I um, start dating this guy, Steve. Steve. In like late high school, I want to say. And Steve like ticks all the boxes of a bad boy. He is a uh, drug dealer. <laughs> he uh, a drug grower. Yeah, he um, I think had dropped out. Of, yeah, he dropped out of school. He's an alcoholic. Perfect for me. Yeah. Perfect. Couldn't ask for more. Really edgy. His politics were really edgy to me at the time. He loved Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand? Ayn Rand. Sorry. Ayn Rand. <laughs> Um, which I don't like her stuff anymore, but you know, I thought it was cool when I was 17. Um, and sorry if you like Ayn Rand. I think at this point you should probably have deduced that I would not be a fan <laughs> anymore yeah. with my politics, but whatever, yours, you can like what you like. And what's funny about it is that my mom, when I decided I wanted to move in with him when I was in college, at this point already he'd been abusive. Like his, he even had said to me, like, my goal is to uh, be mean to you most of the time so that when I'm nice to you, because he literally said this to me, that when I'm nice to you, you'll be grateful. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I kept dating him. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. totally normal. That's love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, anyways, my mom was like, this guy is not good. And she was like begging me, calling me every five seconds, being like, this man's from the wrong side of the tracks. Like, do not date him. And I told her famously that I was going to do what I wanted. And uh, <laughs> that if I regretted it, I will regret it. And um, you know what? I don't actually regret it. I think I had to learn. Yeah. I think I had to replicate my parental relationship because he was just like my dad, except for he was also an alcoholic. My dad never really drank. Um, but on my mom's side, there's a lot of alcoholism. My grandfather was an alcoholic. So I think, yeah. you know, he just combined some male figures for me yeah. all into one person. Um, he, he used to also uh, say a lot of things about your appearance. Yeah. Um, he, he had like a very specific version of you that he expected you to be at all times. Yeah. I, his version of a, a partner was like a uh, housewife in heels at all times. And so his, his brand of abuse in the beginning was verbal. Yeah. Primarily. Um, and he made a point of, of making it very clear that nobody else would be interested in me. And he had some very weird, um, there was sexual abuse. I'm not going to get into those details, but he had some very weird. It was weird and not OK. And actually, I'm uh, we're watching Baby Reindeer right now. And I'm like, it's not as extreme as that. OK, if you're watching <laughs> that, it's like way less extreme. But my point is that I I understand the psychology of what's happening in that series because fawning is a trauma response. And when people do fucked up things to you and you want to be safe, like your brain psychology does some weird shit. And I think especially because I had grown up in a household that was fucked up, fawning was an option for me to be okay a lot of the time. So I defaulted to that with him. Um, and yeah, it was mostly like either verbally berating me, weird physical sexual abuse stuff. And then um, as we got together and stayed together longer, there's a whole thing that happened where he cheated on me. It's not even worth getting into that. That's like... Whatever. That's like the that's not a high point of this. Yeah. No, cheating's never a high point, but you know what I mean? It's, it's like the, the smallest least... part of his abuse. <laughs> yeah. And I'm I'm being deliberately vague because again, I just don't think I need to give you the details to just be like it wasn't good. And my entire time that I was with him, we were together for I think 6 years. The entire time I was with him, my entire goal was to get him to want to marry me. And the more he abused me, the more I wanted him to want to marry me because I I think it wasn't conscious. I can say this now with hindsight. I believed that uh, if I could make him love me and want to marry me, that meant that I was like had value in the world. Yeah, you were good enough. Yeah. Um, and so fast forward, it's 2009. I'm in the middle of doing my master's degree. This is after he's cheated on me. We've broken up and gone back together. And uh, he, we go to Wales 
to visit his mom and then we go to France. And honestly, I had a good time in France. It was good. It was fun. And then we go to the Eiffel Tower and he asks me to marry him on the Eiffel Tower. And that's the kind of thing where like, what does this have to do with survival story? This and like for other people, this is like a fairy tale. But that was the moment, like the moment that he actually asked me to marry him was the moment that I was like, wait a second. Do I want, do I, wait, (laughs) do I want to marry this guy? (laughs) It was weird. It was like suddenly I had achieved my goal. Yeah. And then I didn't know if I wanted it anymore. Then we got a puppy. (laughs) And honestly, um, that puppy saved my life. And I have a lot of regret about this puppy because I was young and immature and we should never have gotten a puppy. And I worry about that dog at this point. He's he'd be hopefully dead. And I say hopefully because I ultimately had to um, sacrifice the puppy to save myself from this relationship. So um, he started abusing the puppy and like physically as well. Like he was abusive physically and verbally to the puppy. And we would have fights about it and like what was okay or not okay. And I don't mean like, you know, like average, like people do things to dogs that I don't agree with because I'm kind of a really a gentle person. I mean, like doing things like not just like showing him his poop and being like, you can't do that. I mean, like hitting him really hard and like smashing his face. So that there's shit all over the dog's face. Yeah, that's really. Weird. Yeah. And um, I, There was other stuff that was going on at the time. I don't even remember the details anymore because it's so long ago. Thank God. Honestly, every year that goes by that I'm not in that relationship, I feel more and more grateful about how long ago it was. (laughs) Uh, But he's he started getting more and more angry. I don't know why. I mean, when people are abusive, often there is no good why. And he started doing things like trashing our house. So whenever he'd get upset, instead of hitting me, what he would do is like knock over all of the furniture, throw things at me um throw things at the dog just destroy everything and then tell me to clean it up yeah and there was this one that's that's like one of the first steps of like becoming physically abusive is like starting to destroy other things yeah around you yeah it was scary i was scared a lot of the time with him um but the thing that that really broke me was seeing him abuse our dog and um i had this moment where i was like if he's this way with a dog, who what's he going to be like with a baby? And at that point, I really thought I was going to live this like cookie cutter life. <laughs> I thought I was going to have two and a half children and a white picket fence. Um, and I was like, I don't want to have kids with this person. And that was the first thing that really got me to question it. And then at some point, I realized I was like, wait, he treats me worse than the dog. And maybe I shouldn't be in it. So that was the revelation. And I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful to the puppy for that. Um, But unfortunately, the the options were for me when I broke up with him was uh, give him the dog or risk more violence towards me and my family. He when I broke up with him, basically told me, like, you can go and you can keep the car. We had two cars. He told me I could keep the car that was already mine. I'm not sure how I didn't process the fact that it was in my (laughs) name and I could just keep the car. Yeah. And I needed the car because I lived in a really rural area. So there is no like getting around if you don't have it. So that was the option. And I was fucking heartbroken. Dan knows I was heartbroken because I literally ran away to Georgia um, because he started doing shit like coming to my parents' house and shooting up the walls with BB gun pellets and just weird shit like that. So what am I missing, Dan? Oh, you were there for a lot of this. Yeah. Um, No, I think that's about it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't there for all the things that you were there for. So, no. but that's, I think that's the, the, the main part of the story. But yeah, I mean, this was a survival story because if you hadn't had that realization, you might still be married to this guy. Oh my God. And your life would be fucking terrible. And their kids' lives. Like I would have had kids and their lives would have been terrible. And um, I'm really glad that I broke that cycle yeah. in my family. I'm really grateful to you for giving me a place to come to, even though I was a fucking mess. <laughs> and I think made your life more difficult in 2010. I know there are really good times that. too, but it was it was rough. But I will just say, like Dan, uh, Dan did save my ass in a really difficult time, and he you watched me melt down quite a bit about how devastated I was. About it was pretty much daily. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd come home from work, and you're just like, I'm sad about her. When yeah, and then I would just cry. That Irwin, was the dog's Irwin's name. Dog's name. <laughs> yeah, he was a German wire haired pointer. Um, I tried to get him back about six months after we had broken up, but that was not an option. So I just have to hope that he had an okay life, but I'm not really sure that's the case because not only did he do all that physical stuff to my parents' house, but he also did things like email. He emailed me this really creepy, like love letter email many months later. Wow. And I responded and was like, fuck no, not in a million years. Will I (laughs) come back to you? But also it was, I wasn't, 
wasn't very strategic. If I could talk to younger Leah in that moment, I would have said, like, save the fuck you part of the letter and try and get the puppy first. (laughs) But I didn't. I was like, fuck, you know, also, can I have Erwin? How is he doing? And that's when he sent me pictures of Erwin chained up onto the side of the road and said, like, I take him to work and he just sits out here tied up all day without water or food. That's how Erwin's doing. Then I lost it. Yeah. So, yeah. (sighs) Yeah. I, um, I, he saved my life, that dog that he saved my life and you saved my life, but he sacrificed a lot and he didn't even know it. And, um, that's what moral of the story. If you're not a stable person or you're in an unstable relationship, I think maybe don't get a dog. I I think like, don't have children, don't have children. Oh my God. Yeah. (laughs) Like, thank God we didn't have kids. And honestly, lots of people do things happen. I got lucky that I even was able to see it as early as I did. I got lucky that I um got to be with dan afterwards and experience a much healthier form of love that gave me a set of standards that i'd never had before but um yeah most of it's luck that i got out yeah also on the one of the many trips back and forth to canada and georgia to be with you is when i encountered the people that were uh gas station attendants who tried to sexually assault me at like four o'clock in the morning that's for another time (laughs) yeah number four in the leah's survival list yeah (laughs) Yeah, it was, it was very late at night. I needed gas. I got off on the side of the road at the very weird little gas station and they tried to corner me in the bathroom and I, oh, it was scary. I don't even want to get into that one. I, I know I listed it and then I was like, you know what? Nope. Yeah. It's I mean, you know, survival stories like, like mine and Chris's, like, I think that recalling it is exciting and yeah, interesting. Not exciting. And then it's like, yeah, I survived the nature that <laughs> almost tried to kill me. But like when you're recalling, like, yeah, somebody tried to like fucking make me, uh, you know, m- make me hurt for the rest of my life um, by abusing me or attacking me or doing something sexual to me. Like that is a, <laughs> a hard, a hard thing to talk about sometimes. Thanks, Dan, for saying that. I don't know if I did a very good job talking about it because it's like it's a delicate balance of how much I want to share. And I. Yeah, I think the reason I wanted to share it potentially, I mean, I, I, we had options. So that's what you went for. Um, but it was on the list because I think this stuff is very common. Yeah. Really, really common. Like abuse does not have to be somebody beating the shit out of you every day. That's yeah. obviously abuse, but there's, there is such a thing as emotional abuse and psychological abuse. Um, sexual abuse in relationships, I think is under talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and the precursors to physical violence. Like I do really believe based on the trajectory it was going that he was going to eventually start hitting me. We just hadn't gotten there yet. Yeah. So it was going to happen. Yeah. So um, I feel like one, as a culture, we've got a lot of healing to do and people need to learn what abuse is. There was a thing that um, I, an acronym I just learned this year called DARVO that I feel like is a, an essential survival tip, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you remember what the acronym is, Dan? Uh, DARVO. Um, I forget what D is. Deny. Deny. Oh, what's A? Okay, I'm just going to say it. So this is an acronym for what people do uh, that are being verbally abusive and also gaslighting you. Uh, first, so say, let's let's mock something up here. Oh, I'll do a classic one, my dad. Okay, so me and my dad, I'd be like, dad, like these are early days when I still thought I could repair that relationship and we could have like real conversation. I'd be like, you did X, Y, or Z when I was a kid and that was really hard. His immediate response is to deny, right? right. Don't. I never did that. That never happened. Uh, then the next part of the acronym is attack. You were a shitty kid and you were unreliable and blah, 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 blah. Right. So you just didn't listen. Yes. Which the intention of that is to reverse the victim and offender it's to make himself the victim and me, the offender. That's Darbo. Deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. And once you see it, it is everywhere. People are doing it all the fucking time. It's a, a really, um, common tactic of manipulation. Our government does it. Yeah. Work coworkers do it. They do it because people it works. in our family. Yeah, it works. It's the easiest way to deflect and twist somebody up when they bring an issue to you. So those are the kinds of things I think it's like, I wish we knew more of those things as a society. I also wish that I'd had just like different models of relationships as a kid. And I also want to say, I wish my mom had divorced my dad when I was young. They were separated when I was 10. And when he came back, I cried. I was so upset about it. So if, I'm going to say this because I don't know who's listening. If you have kids and any of this feels real for you, don't stay for the kids. That's that's not real. Yeah, the, the kids will be better off. It would have been better if my mother had modeled for me that when somebody abuses you, you that would have been the better model, not the 
stick around no matter what. That's how you really love somebody model. Yeah. Just take the abuse. So that's my depressing story. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not so depressing now because my life is really good and I have standards. And that's how I know that I'll keep myself safe. One of my main dreams, I have dreams where Dan does these things to me and I break up with him. And it's like, they're devastating, but they are my, uh, I've talked to my therapist, therapist about it. They're just me rehearsing and practicing and knowing that if these things were to occur again, that I would take care of myself. And that's, yeah. that feels good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we need evil magic chicken zombie clucks after that. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, people don't have to share um, deep, dark secrets if they don't want to. But we do want to hear more people's survival stories. And I think that's a good example of like, you know, a, a wide range of what a survival story can can look like. Yeah. Yeah. You could be you could have survived a religious cult. Yeah. <laughs> for example, that's real. Yeah. I have people in my life who've been through things like that. So, yeah, there's all kinds of ways of survival. And I think we learn things along the way. Yeah, we uh, we're always learning. That's yeah. that's uh, I think when we love uh, zombie apocalypse stories, that might also be a way that our mind is trying to prepare us for something. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, I think I think we're just trying to survive and the zombie apocalypse is like a fun way for our brains to like geek out about that and also prepare itself. I think so, too. Yeah. I think I think we have a primal part of us that knows that as much as things feel stable because we are lucky enough to be living in a time and place and be of a race that is generally more stable. Uh, but I think we know that there's a real possibility things can change. This yeah. is a dark podcast. Oh, my <laughs> it God. It really took a turn, didn't it? <laughs> On another note, I'm going to give one positive one. My brother saved me twice. He saved me from drowning in a pond as a kid while we were skating. And he saved me from uh, drowning in a set of rapids that we were yeah. swimming in together. Two times yeah. drowning. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, brother. I know. Isn't that what's, what's that? I wonder if I'm going to, am I going to drown to death? Oh, my God. <laughs> Knocking on wood. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. Does that hurt your ears when I do it? <laughs> no, but I'm going to have to fix that in post. <laughs> really? What will happen? It's going to be really loud. Oh. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, maybe one day we can get my brother on the podcast to tell a survival story about me saving him in a river. Ooh, that sounds yeah. fun. We can swap stories. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for groans from the horde. Yeah. Are we going to groan? Yeah, one, Ollie Eats Brains, again, got to give you another shout out, had not even listened to our Hashtag Alive episode yet, was just aired today, the day that we're recording this, and was already like, hey, I hope that you compared Alive and the American version alone because of the cultural differences. And I was like, damn it, Ollie. <laughs> we didn't realize that till it was too late, <laughs> but we are going to watch alone the other version yeah. um, very soon and really curious to see how it, it stacks up. Yeah, I'm curious now. Yeah. I was I was not like when I when I saw the the previews for Alone, I was like, ah, this, this is going to this because like this isn't the first time. Well, this isn't this isn't that. But um, like when Korea has something that does really well, sometimes um, they'll want to make remake that in the US. So like a perfect example is Train to Busan. They want to do Train to New York. Boring. Yeah. I mean, maybe it'll be good. I don't know. But like, that's what I thought this was. It's mm. like, ah, like a remake. Just, yeah. They're just trying to make the American version. Yeah. Because they but, uh, assume Americans won't watch Korean things, which is proving to be untrue. Yeah. But turns out they were just both. They both had access to the same script. Mm. Well, we will watch that one and we shall compare, even if it is belated. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Which groan from the hordes do you want to hear first? Do you want to hear um, the last two evil magic chicken zombie clocks I've got? Hint, hint, folks, give me more. Um, or do you want to hear a voicemail from Zompocalypse, who we called upon for random facts on Night of the Living Dead? Let's hear Zompocalypse and then okay. end it with some some clucks. OK, hold on one moment. I need to go to the messages. All right. Zompocalypse. Here we go. You have summoned Zompocalypse. Hi, Zompocalypse. We did. some knowledge. Yeah, we assumed you knew what everything about it. What kind of knowledge do you wish? <laughs> All of it. You have to call me out about George Romero's Night and Living Dead. <laughs> I got really much of nothing. Oh, One that's disappointing. What a, I'm just pausing for a second. What a letdown. I thought you would know everything yeah, about Night of the Living Dead. I, I call his bluff. Yeah, let's see what happens next. He says he's got a lot of nothing. But we also have a three-minute voicemail, so I'm not sure I believe that. <laughs> 
to tell you guys this. I I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard over the grapevine. This is kind of a fun thing to think about. George Romero did not like the term thuggy. He wanted to call them ghouls. Mm, very fallout. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? I guess that's a uh, fun fact of the day, I guess. <laughs> I but guess. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. I just heard it. We the just did. Line. Yeah. <laughs> it was someone else who is just as big as a George Romero fan as I am. That is the, you have called the public knowledge. <laughs> There's still two more minutes in this voicemail. I have yeah. no idea what's you next. Know, I mean, um, George Romero, I mean, I feel like he can call him whatever he wants because at the time the genre didn't exist. True. But I think it's a good thing that he called him zombies because it had some cultural significance. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe if he'd make it, made a different decision, either either zombie movies wouldn't be as popular as they are today, or we would be watching ghoul movies. I don't like it. I like zombie. Yeah. I actually am annoyed that Fallout, they call them ghouls. Let's just call them zombies. Yeah. They become zombies. All right, let's listen a little more. Well, I haven't given you my zombie chicken noise yet. Oh, shit. Oh, yes. I didn't know. I paused again. I didn't know this was coming. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I am getting a t-shirt for the idea for the, um, for the zombie clocking noise competition. <laughs> but I feel I, I'm obligated to give you my best impression of the zombie chicken Thank you. I'm ready for it. I'm not going to be as funny as Dan's or anybody else's, but oh, I will thanks. give you my best impression. That's all we ask for. So I think funny. Voice. <clears throat> are, you, are you all ready? Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, this is why I think it's going to sound like. If a zombie, a magic zombie chicken is going to happen. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he is going Hope you guys it. enjoy it. And. Oh, he- it is. <laughs> He hit the three minute limit. <laughs> so he got cut off. But I will say, uh, wow, I wish my dad had introduced me to the Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. You know, I I used to watch That's movies abuse, with my stepdad once removed. Um, and, uh, you know, horror movies were like what we would do when I'd come over um, on the weekend. Right. So like we go and rent movies at the movie store, the mm. rental, the rental, the video rental store. Um, I do remember watching dawn of the dead the 1978 dawn of the dead i loved it because i I mean as a kid i was kind of a gun nut i just drew guns all the time i read gun books and i just thought they were cool i'm having a really hard time paying attention to what you're saying because dan is doing this weird thing with his eyeballs that makes him look like a zombie i'm a zombie i know we're tired Um, but uh but like i only saw it like once Mm. I didn't really discover Night of the Living Dead until I joined the army and we were watching it in the day room during training. Um, when I was in training, not for training, we were, it's the weekend, we're in the day room, we're like, let's watch movies. And then we, we watched the Night of the Living Dead, both versions, back to back, I think. Um, and I was like, I think I love zombies. I think it's cool. I, I'm, I like what's going on here. I can't describe it, why I like it so much, because it's just a movie inside of a house and not a whole lot really happens, but it makes me feel things. And I don't know what that is. And it took me, you know, 20 years or more to, uh, to understand why I like it so much. Mm. And I still couldn't really answer that question. I was going to say, why do you like it so much? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, we tried to talk about it. Yeah. We have two more zombie clocks, Dan. Okay. I want to, I want to send us out on zombie clocks. Yeah, send, send me out on a zombie clock. <laughs> That one sounds like that was three seconds. That's our world's shortest zombie cluck. Yeah. I think that one sounds like it was drowning. I'm going to play it one more time. (laughs) (laughs) And last but not least. Why are chickens so funny? Especially chicken zombies. Because. (laughs) Uh, That was a great joke. (laughs) Well, somebody here is going to get a T-shirt. We don't know who we're going to draw it for our 50th episode. Yeah. Are we just going to pick at random? I think so. Yeah, I think just... so. I don't think I could pick because they're all so good. Yeah. They're, they're all wonderful in their own ways. Yeah. Like even the three second one, 
was hilarious just for being so Three short. Three seconds. Yeah. And then Zompocalypse, we already gave you a t-shirt because you helped us with this idea and we loved it. Um, but thank you. We, I thank you for your cluck. I, as I've said many times, all I'm asking for is a cluck. Just one cluck. Just, the, just go cluck. <laughs> that would be fine. Yeah. That's all I want. Oh, man. More clucks. You've got time to be entered into the t-shirt competition. Well, Leah. Yes, Dan. Oh, we're, we, we're, we're coming to the end. Can you guys hear the, the energy sapping out of us as we end yeah. this all day long recording session? <laughs> it feels like <laughs> at least it's been a few hours. Other than going out for breakfast, this is all yeah. we've done today. Pretty we much. try to keep it, keep the, keep it at a high level the entire time, but I cannot lie. I am ready to lay down and go into a coma my eyes oh, not my <laughs> eyes that's how i know i'm tired too my ears literally hurt from the headphones yeah. so we are yeah. going to remind you one last time that your zombie homework for episode 45 is the comic series and multimedia experience path of the pale writer yeah by writer sorry Lori calcaterra yes uh there are incredible things in it like american sign language riddles Fun little secrets. Yeah. Little, little QR tiny codes. little movies. Yeah. Stories within stories within stories. We got Rick rolled. It's like we, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and as you'll learn when you listen to that episode, um, as usual, I forgot a lot of details, but I never forget that I love it. Yeah. Because that's how my brain works. Uh, and as always, we want to be clear. We read what we want to read. So we are truly promoting this because we like it. Yeah. And Lori is incredible. We truly. We recorded the episode just before this episode, which will be coming out in the future after this episode. Yeah. Uh, but it was a really good one and we had a great time and now we are exhausted. Yeah. If anything, I'm a little embarrassed by how much I fangirled, but I'll get over it. <laughs> I don't know what I'll feel more of a vulnerability hangover for after today. Was it me sharing my story of abuse or just telling Lori multiple times that I think that she's the best thing ever? Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, call us. 614-699-0006. You have up to three minutes yeah, to send us a message. <laughs> <laughs> or email us at zombiebookclubpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe in all the places. Um, yeah. Get bit. Yeah. Leave, bite a, some leave, others. A, leave a rating and a review. It helps us. It does. And we need all the help we can get. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Oh, and go buy an evil magic chicken zombie shirt or sticker or mug. Yeah. Or baby onesie. Yeah. Do you need a baby onesie? You want one with a chicken on it? Oh, a dog handkerchief for their oh, neck. Oh, right. I forgot so many about options you need to for get you. Them for these boys. We do. We can I'm get pointing them to at model dogs. them. Yes. <laughs> That's what these boys mean. All right. We are delirious. <laughs> We're going to go eat our favorite meal on nights where we have had not enough time to cook, which is uh, frozen pizza and nuggets. Yeah. Pizza nugs. Yep. All right, That's everybody. That's how we do. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a great time. The end is nigh. Don't die. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Bye, -bye. <laughs>